DevOps is big by design. When we talk about DevOps, it's really critically important that we talk about context because the term is so big and it covers so much ground. Is DevOps a cultural movement? Is it a mindset? Is it a collection of processes and tools? These are the things we really need to scope down when we're having a discussion so we can all be on the same page. Because again, DevOps is big and it's open to interpretation. Now, GitOps, on the other hand, is very much more narrowly scoped. It is about taking DevOps best practices and applying them to infrastructure automation. But that can still get pretty confusing at times. Now, to shed some light on the subject, one of our sponsors, Adaptivist, will be coming to the stage to talk about a very specific definition of GitOps and continuous delivery on Kubernetes. And when you have a moment, uh, please check out Adaptivist demo on the demo stage as well. Now let's watch. Hello, 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 and welcome to GitLab Commit's virtual session on GitOps. What's in a name? My name is Rasmus Paston. I am a principal DevOps consultant at Adaptivist. I am at Servitor pretty much all over the web. Today's session is going to be on GitOps, which is clearly the new hotness based on all the sessions and tools and things coming out about it. But what is it becoming? What are different things called GitOps? Are they really? And so on and so forth. I am going to cover a few flavors of GitOps out there, which can be sort of confusing to get a hold of. So I am covering uh, something I think of as true GitOps, which is the sort of original things that WeWorks came out with with Flux and it covers Argo CD and so on. These generally serve as extensions to DevOps, as if it's a, it's a small additional piece, a small narrowly focused process that you follow to do a specific thing. It relies on uh, continuous delivery, Kubernetes, uses an operator, and is a pull effect. GitLab also has a series of uh, things called GitOps, which we will detail a little later. In their case, it's really more of an evolution of DevOps. It's sort of everything is becoming GitOps because there's a bigger focus on using merge requests and Git and putting everything in there, especially for your info and so on. So in their case, it covers CI/CD. It uses some agents for, uh, for Kubernetes in some cases. And it kind of mixes both push and pull when it comes to how changes flow in what sort of direction. I have a third one that's a little bit more goofy, which is Hobo GitOps. And I will get into that name a little later. But in short, it is any sort of approximation of GitOps, mainly the true form of GitOps, the, the, the one that's the closest to the, the real intended original thing which means that there's some sort of operator-ish thing. It's not necessarily one of these like nice things like you would get with Flux or Argo, but the idea is that you need to be following some sort of operator pattern, which involves pulling your changes from Git into a cluster or some sort of restricted environment. Finally, there's also a category I think of as might as well be GitOps. These are things that are not explicitly listed as GitOps, but they might as well be because they're really following the spirit and, and pretty much could be branded that, but for whatever reason, they're not. One of these options is something that Google kind of generically calls application delivery, which is a push only type thing. If there's a CLI that pushes changes into an environment, but since it's a CLI that can serve as an operator, you could put it into an automation system of some sort and really use it as a pull effect instead. So let's look at these in a little bit more detail. True GitOps is what I consider the original that was coined in 2017 by WeWorks as operations by pull request. The focus is to extend the stuff that you're already used to through DevOps. 
which includes CI and particularly the supporting culture of getting developers and operations professionals closer together and get them to just work better together with tools and APIs and process as opposed to the good old just throw things over the wall. Specifically, the true GitOps is an opinionated approach for how to do CD, which is something lives inside a Kubernetes cluster and pulls changes into it as they emerge into Git. It does not accept pushing things into a cluster because that means you have more access than you need in that cluster. You really kind of rather want to have a declarative Git repo that you just go update and then when it's updated, well, something in the cluster pulls changes into it. So tools like Reflux or Argo CD provide this with a lightweight operator of some sort inside the cluster for security so that after it's set up, you don't need to have anything outside the cluster actually able to reach into it. There are some secondary topics then. So for instance, Argo CD has a nice operation UI, which allows you to do a few extra things. And there is also that piece about how you actually set up the cluster in the first place, which does require admin access to the cluster. It requires some extra bits and pieces. But in this context, it is not part of GitOps. It is part of the setup that enables GitOps. So to summarize, true GitOps definitely uses pull with an operator inside the cluster. It is Kubernetes, and that's it. You can you know, approximate other things with other options, but this one uses Kubernetes, and it only does CD. There are some discussion about whether or not you can do some operations as well. So there are some newer options um, floating around where you also have some level of continuous operation floating around in part of this. But that's true GitOps, and there's a little link down here to the original um, description of it, and WeWorks has a ton of articles on, on GitOps and such. So on GitLab, there's a bunch of different kinds of GitOps flavored things. So kind of in the wild world right now, GitOps is really being used as a buzzword all over the place, being slapped on anything, every part of you can imagine, whether remotely, actually um, related to true GitOps. I have actually been in a session on GitOps that I thought was going to be technical that got into talking about human psychology as related to GitOps. Okay, sure, right, all right, cool. So GitLab tries to take a balanced approach. While true GitOps takes a relatively small thing and just attaches it to DevOps, GitLab really infuses the spirit of GitOps all over the place in DevOps. So as noted earlier, it's really more of an evolution. So things that are DevOps are now GitOps. Defined by GitLab, by GitLab sorry, GitOps really just is infrastructure as code plus, mer plus merge requests along with CICD. Those three pieces, you have GitOps. Okay, you can sort of imagine these things infused into those buses. Particularly, this is a natural fit because GitLab tries to do all the things with the pipeline front and center to do all the things and run them. So generally, the GitLab pipeline is the master of all the things, has access to do all the things, and triggers and activates all the things. You can run other things as part of a GitLab setup, such as simply setting up Argo CD inside a cluster and work them separately. But that's your choice, and parts of that will still be GitOps to a you know, degree with, with GitLab, but at that point, you're kind of sort of doing two different things that are just kind of bolted together, which may or may not work depending on um, your setup. More detail on this later, but in short, it is sort of a mix of push and pull. In some cases, you have a specialized agent for Kubernetes. In other cases, you're doing pretty traditional CI CD as part of standard DevOps that will use Terraform and things to update the targets. But while having absolutely everything stored in Git, managed with a merge request process, and so on and so forth. It generally covers both CI and CD, 
since it's the central pipeline doing everything. And oftentimes it's Kubernetes, but it can be applied elsewhere in sort of following the same spirit. And there are a whole bunch of articles as well on GitLab, on the GitOps topics of various kinds. Lots of nice presentations and things too, if you're curious about the people. Cobo GitOps is sort of a, a funny thing. Um, there is, as I said, a lot of weirdness out there these days being called GitOps. And I came up with a simple test of simply replace GitOps in a sentence with DevOps or ISC. Did it change? If not, you're probably not looking at GitOps, or at least not something that is trying to embody the original spirit of true GitOps. However, if you kind of still do want to do GitOps, but you're not quite able to, you know, adopt all the things, and you're not necessarily in a working environment that really supports it, you can still approximate it. So there's a way to do all kinds of tools and just set it up to follow the patterns that approximate true GitOps. And you can do plenty of benefit like that. And it's a good way of taking one step towards formally adopting GitOps more clearly. So I have done this um, and I used Jenkins and bestowed the term Hobo GitOps on it. It was really just a set of Jenkins controllers working in different tiers that were isolated enough to where that Jenkins could kind of function as a pull effect and run simple CD jobs. So ultimately in this case, the main objective is always going to be auto-triggered CD from pull requests or merge requests with some sort of makeshift operator ideally isolated within the environment that is having CD applied to it pulling changes in as they get merged from Git. So it's still pull, but it can kind of be a makeshift operator that doesn't not always look as clean as you might like. It is meant to be CD only, but it can be co-located with CI or other operations. In the whole GitOps I've done with Jenkins Masters for a particular client, it ended up using dozens of Jenkins Masters, which might be a lot depending on your company setup. So you can shrink that down quite substantially. And you really just have CI jobs in your Jenkins, you can have CD jobs in your Jenkins, you can have operations, utility jobs in your Jenkins, and so on. And you can still say, well, the CD part still is using GitOps in spirit, even if it isn't quite as isolated as it could be. So it can work. It can work in Kubernetes or really whatever you manage to hook up to some, some form or another and you know, call it GitOps with the right spirit behind it. Finally, I said uh, there is something I consider might as well be GitOps. Because, you know, while there is a lot of marketing buzzwords out there stacking GitOps on everything, but there are also times where the opposite happens, where something really kind of is GitOps, but doesn't call itself that. It doesn't feel like it needs to, but it just kind of happens to like, to be close enough to where you might as well think of it as GitOps. I found uh, Google's application delivery to be a really cool example of this. It is an add-on for Google Kubernetes Engine, or GKE, and it does actually work with GitLab, which is cool. It uh, does a lot of these opinionated config file layouts in Git. That's where it can work in GitLab, GitHub, and their CLI is able to automatically create pull requests and things like that in the Git provider, which is again where and, and how it integrates with, with GitLab or GitHub. Finally, it adds a few extra UI bits on GKE, which is typical. They have a lot of syntactical sugar and spiffy UIs on, on Google Cloud. What it is, is again, essentially IAC with Git not called GitOps, and the CLI operator is distinctly push-based. You actually go in there and type, you know, da da da, apply my changes. But really, you could have that step installed into an agent in an automation tool like Jenkins, and you just have the automation tool do da da da, apply the changes when it sees that it has changed. So you can hobo it into a pull approach that's even more GitOpsy, 
than plenty of things that are fully advertised as being pinups. So, in this case, it does start as push, but it can be in price to pull. It is CD with some enriched UI work, but it only works in Kubernetes or Google Pratt because it's a GKE network. And there's a bunch more details in here for this link on Google's cloud site. So, with all that in mind, do you want to adopt GitOps? I would say not explicitly. You want to look for something that really kind of follows the spirit, the patterns of GitOps, not something just because the name got slapped on there. So, look at the tools, look at what they actually do, not what they call themselves, which is probably you know, a good general advice for most of anything. I have a, a few more technical details for the remainder of the presentation, so let's look a little bit deeper at some of these examples. So, Argo CD is kind of the probably the best example of true GitOps because it's it's fairly straightforward. It's well understood. There are plenty of good guides. It has a narrow purpose. Argo CD does GitOps in Kubernetes. That's it. It has a nice little UI where you can enter in your new apps and, and see how what kind of status they're in, refresh things, delete things, organize things. This UI runs out of the operator that you put into your uh, cluster. So you can go in and help you know configure it, but you're still actually having Argo pull in the changes whenever you change stuff in Git. This is a straightforward setup if you can make a good fit out of the opinionation that Argo requires, which again is definitely Kubernetes. It's individual apps insofar that you, know, you make one app and it points at one Git repo and that's it. It takes care of itself. You know, if you're doing tons and tons of independent things and so on and so forth, you might need something a little bit more. There is uh, really cool things going on in Reworks's GitHub setup where they have some scaling things that um, kind of give you another layer to this that they call profiles. There are, you know, as usual, going to be good materials and um, demonstrations for that floating around if you're curious about it. And for that sake, speaking of WeWorks, and um, there was some talk about WeWorks Flux and Argo CD actually merging at some point, but I recently found out that uh, that sadly was an abandoned effort. So we're still going to have two of them that kind of sort of end up doing most of the same thing. But you might find that some things in one or the other fits with your environment a little bit better. Finally, to be clear, Argo has both this UI as well as the CLI, where you can do things like, I want to register an application. This is the Git repo it, it uses. Here are some you know, e extra things to think about. You can do that either in the app or in the UI. It is really easy to get running. There are really good tutorials. You can play with it, and it really helps visually you know, highlight what is the core of GitOps? What's the point? What, what is it that you're trying to do with it and how is it different from other things? With GitOps, it's really more of a, a wide purpose and range of things that it helps you do. It's really kind of taken a lot of traditional things and then it's kind of just, you know, put a, a layer of GitOps and goodness on top of it all to just keep up with the latest, greatest process and best practices and patterns and so on and so forth. So in this case, there are three or four approaches depending on kind of the timeline. I think this, this final one was in development uh, when some of the material I was looking at was, uh, was, had been written. I'm not quite sure if that's out yet or not, but the first three are for sure which is essentially the, the standard old fashioned push by your CD, CSCD pipeline, which just, you know, as long as it uses Git as your declarative source of infrastructure specific and so on, counts as GitOps. There is one specifically pointed out that uses Terraform in a particular way. That's what this, this diagram here is. 
which really gets into making sure that you know Terraform is setting up all of your things correctly whenever you know, your pipeline runs. Both of these are push. Both of these take full access because Git, uh, GitLab wants to have the ability to fully control the target clusters and do what it needs to do to it. That has traditionally been a bit much for some companies to swallow, just because that's a lot of um, you know power to leave in a tool, and we know everything can be you know, compromised these days. And if it is, well, then you have access to everything that thing allows you to do. One of the kind of fundamental tenets of GitOps was to flip that around to where if you compromise something, you can't go and completely mess with and backdoor into the production environments. Although, of course, if your Git repo itself gets compromised and people start merging things, then you can still, um, you know, introduce stuff, but you can't completely overhaul the process and stop just quietly supplement putting things in. You still have to go through the front door. You just, you know, can get to the front door if you compromise a system like that. But there's still a door. It's not like free for all. The next two that are specific to Kubernetes uses a, a new um, GitLab Kubernetes agent setup, which is another thing that is um, detailed on their website and the link down here. Specifically, this does kind of a two-phase approach in that there's both a, a meteor agent that's sitting on GitLab that's doing most of the work, and then there's a smaller agent that sits inside the cluster that does kind of the, the, the pull type thing. But the GitLab agent is the original thing that sits all these things up and handles some sort of communication and so forth. So it's a little bit more complicated and involved than simply having one of the true GitOps operators floating around in your cluster. And the it said this sort of supports two different setups. One is the standard kind of pull, because you have an agent sitting in the cluster that looks at your Git, pulling things when you want it. And there is one that is meant to use push, but with the advantage that it's using this established setup where you don't quite need as much access or permissions assigned to GitLab for it to be able to use it. So this is a more comforting option than old fashioned straight up you know, CD with full lab and access to all the things. Between these four methods, you can type in both Kubernetes and other things. So I said like Terraform, just point it at raw AWS. It doesn't have to be using Kubernetes. It you know, still is IAC plus merge requests and do your things. And again, the first two has full access and the second two are more you know, limited in what they need. All this stuff really works well with the overall enterprise strategy that GitLab uh, promotes because you can you know, consider all this part of the whole SDLC and just add GitOps where it's possible. So that's the deeper dive on GitLab GitOps, but for the really deep stuff, they have tons of value out there for you to look at and play with in examples and so on and so forth. This is still motion does a you know, sanity check on what different kinds of GitOps actually mean. For a little bit more on the Hobo GitOps, which is really anything you can make work that to some point approximates GitOps as much as you can within whatever constraints you're working with. That means it can be very arbitrary. This setup with um, different tiers and a Jenkins master per tier adds up a lot. If you have dozens of teams and each team has, you know, three CD controllers, as well as the CI uh, Jenkins and maybe a lab of some sort, you can end up with dozens or even hundreds of Jenkins masters. And sometimes that works. If that's just the size you're working at and it works for you, awesome, great. If it works, do it. So it, it this leaves you with a lot of flexibility, but it's a lot, a lot less guided and opinionated. So it really takes some discipline in actually coming up with a setup and not being tempted to say things like, well, 
yeah, I prepared this pull request from the QA branch of repo into production, but while I did get it approved, I need to make this one other change and I have access to this thing. So I'm just going to go like squeeze this change in just real quick because you know, we aren't really used to get them. So we can just, you know, improvise a little bit like, no, 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 resist the temptation. Try to be, you know, a, a good hobo get up or get ups hobo and do it the right way. I said this example was using tiered accounts in Obvious, that is each team has a production account, which is of course heavily limited for access, a QA account, which is a little less limited, but you still need to use the, the regular process in there. You just can probably see some more things than normally. And then a dev account, which is where you have more full access as developers and can probably go tinker with things and make sure that whatever you set up for your Jenkins is actually working. Because in this setup, you, you know, you get these Jenkins managers as operators. And it reads states from, from Git, but it also requires you to actually code in the deployment job logic in, for instance, job DSL, so that when you have an application, that application has a CD job in Jenkins, which knows how to deploy the application into something on AWS. So finally, as uh, noted earlier, while this ends up probably causing Jenkins sprawl unless you're really good at automating Jenkins or use really lightweight throwaway Jenkinses that are just completely like hit the button and magic happens and it's up and running. You can do less and say, you know, you could combine two of these or all of them or include CI and sort of just have multiple things inside the controller as you see fit. If you have small teams and their stuff isn't very sensitive, maybe they don't need a whole bunch of different accounts and, and Jenkins masters and so on. Maybe they can do you know more with less. So it's really up to you. That's the hobo part. Just it works. Finally, here is application delivery on GKE. This is going to I mean you can sort of kind of imagine it being a little bit like Argo, at least on this one application's tab which normally if you're used to GKE, but you haven't used application delivery or all the things, this thing tends to be empty because it's really a place for add-ons and extra things. And with application delivery in place, you start seeing it being populated. So if you have individual applications in here, which has you know, your usual level of uh, extra information and components. And particularly to this setup is a very strong uh, environment identity. So you're really getting into using your app config repo to define these different environments and carry things between environments so that when you're in the UI, you can go look and see, hey, okay, no, my staging environment is in here and prod is in here and the active git tag of uh, this one here, which is in staging, is this thing. So it's 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 very nice kind of overview on the whole uh, environments um, between a to B and C and so on. They have a really nice uh, CLI. It seems like everybody in the log has their own CLI these days. But what I like about it is that it uh, it goes in and makes the updates for you and stages them in Git. It will make the pull requests for you, which starts helping a little bit when you're trying to scale. If you're doing you know tons and tons of microservices and you need to make all of them work within Git. If you can just type in like, okay, operate, operate this dependency for all these things and magic happens and you have 20 PRs, and then you can say, yep, that roughly looks right. Merge all of them, magic happens. Cool, you are still using GitOps. It's just kind of automated at a meta layer of just getting crazier with how, how nice it is. But ultimately at, at the foundation level, it's still GitOps, even though they never call it GitOps anywhere. It just uses the same principles and it's really cool. As noted, it has a really nice uh, UI integration on here on, on GKE. And it has that really extra focus, extra strong focus on well-defined environments and promoting code, these Git tags, between those environments, step by step by step. So, might as well be GitOps. And that was really it. Thank you very much for coming to this talk. I hope it has helped a little bit 
in, in making heads and tails of what is GitOps, what isn't, and what might as well be. And hopefully uh, by next year, we will be able to meet in person and hand out goodie bags with GitOps enabled toasters because you don't know, it could happen. All right, thank you so much. Uh, maybe we can do some Q&A or something like that if we are around. And if not, if you're watching this recording, well, cool. Take care.